Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. Um, I'm Shannon at Chacao on the forums. And I'm Daryl at Darzu on the forums. I'm Joey at J Wonderall on the forums. I'm Richard. And I'm Vivian at Live Triple on the forums. Um, so just a quick note, this week and probably um, for the future, we're using the uh, beta editor. So that's arcade.makecode.com slash beta. Um, and that's because we are about to release Arcade. So Beta has all of the newest features, um, all of the things we're, you know, um, testing out and potentially some extra bugs. Um, but yeah, so if you're following along, that's arcade.makecode.com slash beta. Um, yeah, so the thing I always tell people in the forum is um, don't expect games that are made in beta to work forever. If you want a game to be, you know, working consistently, you should do it on the non-beta website. But if you're just playing around, beta works fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. So the thing I wanted to do today is to show off a couple different um, ways you can make dialogues look different in our game. Um, and to do that, I'm going to be making kind of like a point-and-click um, adventure. So. But um, Shannon, we yes. don't have a pointer. Oh well. I'm about to make one. Um, so you know how our uh, player sprite is usually like, you know, like a person or like an animal, right? Um, that doesn't have to be the case. Uh, the player sprite can be whatever you want it to be. In this case, it's going to be a hand, um, you know, like you see in your computer. Um, I'm very impressed by just going for a hand. That's, that's a quality hand. So, oh. <laughs> you gave it the right number of fingers and everything. I, you have to give it the right number of fingers, right? Otherwise, it's like I mean, you should. any mouse. <laughs> well, you know, in like cartoons, they don't give them the right number of fingers. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I feel like like the mouse pointer in your computer has the right number of fingers, right? Maybe. I mean, it should. I mean, I've seen like ads where there where people with a random finger photoshopped in by accident because they tried to change it. <laughs> I'm looking at our mouse right now, and I, it has five fingers. Cool. Yeah, mine also has. <laughs> five fingers, but it's also a little Mickey Mouse glove, which I've always thought is a weird thing about Max. <laughs> what? Um, cool. So here's a little pointer. Um, and I was looking at the one from your computer. I was like, wow, Shannon, looks so cool. <laughs> Very realistic. <laughs> Yeah, modeling off of this guy. <laughs> oh, all right, wait for the simulator to load. There we go. And I'm going to do our usual thing. So you're going to move the player with buttons. Um, and instead of doing camera follow, I'm actually going to set stay in screen to be true. So this game is going to take place all in one screen. Um, so now if we refresh, hit play. Come on. Maybe we need some like computer fingers to like cheer it on and be like number <laughs> one game. <laughs> All right. So now if I uh, move around and then I can't go off the screen. I'm um, cool. Um, so the game that I had in mind was one where you're trying to like maybe hack into like a computer. Um, so I'm going to make some, like, uh, scene sprites for this. Um, they're not going to be very polished. Um, but let's see. So this Shannon one, always says that, and she draws something better than... I am, it's definitely not going to be. <laughs> um, all right, so this is big. Um, I'm going to make it, I guess, like beige. Um, and then, all right, so here's the computer screen. And it goes out the back. Um, I'm just sort of putting this shape in here so that we will have something to look at. Um, and let me see. Um, oh no. <laughs> oh. You've 
got a leak? Yeah. Several, probably. <laughs> um, shoot. Oh, down there. All right. I should definitely have made this a different color, but that's okay. We're doing this now. Um, cool. All right, you were right this time, Shannon. Boom. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. It's beautiful. It has reflections. All so right. Fancy. So, wait for the simulator. Man, my system is very unhappy today. Cool. Um, and our hand is behind it, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to set this, um, the position of the computer to be like, just over a little bit. Um, position to like here. Um, cool. And then uh, when you click on the computer, um, I'm going to have a dialogue pop up that is like the text on the computer screen. Um, oh, and the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the, um, pointer show up above the everything we add into our scene. So to do that, I'm going to grab this set, drag it up here, and I'm going to set the pointers Z index um, to 10. So everything's Z index starts out at zero, um, and they're sort of layered in the order you create them in. Um, so I'm just setting the uh, pointer to 10, so it's above everything. Um, every other sprite in the scene. So, cool. Um, so now I appear over this computer. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is when you press the A button, so that's like clicking. Um, it is like clicking. We're going to, oh, and I'm gonna change the type. If you saw the hardware, there'll even be a nice little click sound probably. That's a pretty <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to go to logic. I'm going to grab out an if block. Um, and what I want to do is I want to say if you're hovering over the computer when you like click. Um, so if I go into sprites, um, scroll down, um, you, you see our usual overlaps, which is this like event handler. We also have this um, diamond shaped overlap block and that returns a true or false. So I can use this to check if specifically my pointer is overlapping with the computer. Um, and this isn't using like the kinds of the sprites. Um, it's using the specific variable that I created here. So pointer and computer. Um, so if my pointer was overlapping with a different object, this would be false. So um, Shannon, with the overlaps, how does it work for um, transparent pixels? Um, it returns, uh, it's pixel perfect. So um, it only returns true if you're overlapping a colored pixel. If any colored part of the first sprite overlaps a different colored part. Is that? Yep. Weird? So if you make a transparent sprite, it would never overlap with anything. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So now I'm going to go into game. And if I scroll down here, we have all of these dialogue things. Um, so I'm going to grab out, I think, all of them. Text color, the cursor, and that's the wrong category. Show long text. Cool. So um, I'm going to set the text color to green, which is computer colored. Um, I'm going to, I don't really want a border. I think I'm just going to have this show up against like a black background. Um, but I'm making the dialog frame smaller to reduce the like amount of padding around it. Um, and I'm going to make the, um, I don't know. I'm going to make this like a line. Cool. So let's see. So this right now, I think, will appear over the computer. Um, ooh, full screen. And all right. 
So let's try this out. I uh, overlap the computer and I press A. Um, cool. So you get like, so, you know, some computer looking text and this little cursor down here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to hide everything else in the screen. So it looks like you're looking at just a black, um, you know, like a computer screen, right? Um, and to do that, I guess I'm just going to loop over everything and hide it. You can set the dialogue frame to you have color. Yeah, I could just make it a black dialogue frame, can't I? Yep. Now that we have this full screen option, I think that will do it. Um, cool. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another line of text. So, try and bump this thing to the next line. Um, yeah, you're just going to have to calculate it. Yeah. Um, I think I have an issue to just add support for like slash n, but we should do that sometime. <laughs> I'm uh, I'll sneak it into this release. I'll do it today. <laughs> cool. I'll also bring over the word wrapping stuff for my story extension because it's much oh, better. Cool. Yeah. Yes. That's checked in. Um, sweet. So this is one, two, three, four. So I'm going to remove four um, spaces. Actually, maybe I'll just add another. We could add, we could make a function to format the text if we knew what the width would be. Mm -hmm. You could just join spaces to it until it's the right width and then return it like we can with new return values. Yeah, is that too is that too complicated for the stream? I think it might be fun. Um, oh, I see. You mean like right now? Yeah. Um, I think that should work. Let's try it. <laughs> All right. Format text and it's going to take in um text and then a number for uh I guess. You could just um, hard code it to be the, the width for full screen, right? Yeah, um, but I need some way to identify um, like line breaks. So I guess I could, I can't pass that well, in the way. Um, I guess what you could do is just make it take a single line and then just join all of those together. Mm -hmm. And then you'll um, oh, so sure. take so a like, piece of text and make it a single line and then. yeah. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a string, and then I'm just going to add enough spaces to the end of it to um, fill out that line. Um, cool. So how many is this? Um, yeah, that's a good question. To go. Ish. Um, yeah, I think it's 26. We'll try it. Cool. Try it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to take, um, and then let's see, if, um, hmm, I guess I could use a while loop for this. I think um, you're going to have to no matter what. Yeah, I don't think we have anything else. Cool. And then at the end, I'm going to return. Um, so I'm going to make this um, text. So to start with, I'm going to set the padded text to this text um, string. And then I'm going to check. So while the length of the string is less than um, 26, we said. Mm -hmm. So if I go into text, I got that this um, length of block. And 
I can right click on padded text to create a get. So while length of padded text is less than 20, I'm just going to add a space to it. So I'm going to duplicate this set padded text. Um, and instead of setting it to this, I'm going to set it to um, the existing padded text plus just. So I can duplicate this block. And I'm going to return the padded text. So essentially what this function does is um, it takes in some text, a string, and then while the length of that string is less than 26, I'm going to add a space to it. Um, and then when it becomes 26, it'll return the string. Mm -hmm. um, so then I'm going to do a join here. And then I'm going to go here, call my function. Um, so hopefully this will return um, a line of text that is you know, exactly the right length. All right, let's see how our math is. Not really math, it's our counting. Counting is math? What? I that's guess counting is math. math. Yeah, it's adding one to itself. That's fine. <laughs> I like the idea that babies are doing math. <laughs> Anyone can do math. Anybody can do math. Hey! Awesome. Nice! Um, that looks so good. <laughs> cool. And main. then we have this right. little cursor down here. Um, that's not really how computers look, but it's fine. It's, you know, hackery. Um, <laughs> cool. So then the next thing I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I guess add some, like, uh, let's do let's do the other dialogue stuff first, and then I'll do the like um, unlocking mechanic. So I'm going to add um, new variable letter, and this is going to be um, a letter that lives next to the computer, I guess. So. Just pick some numbers for width. That was 64, so I guess this should be like 8 by maybe 32. Cool. And then I'm going to draw like an envelope. Taking some big risks with perspective. I like it. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, you know, there's. Uh, I'm sure it'll work out in the end. <laughs> what is happening? This is always the hardest part about trying. Ah. Oh, it didn't apply See it. the bottom. There we go. Boom. <laughs> and then um, give it like, you know, an envelope. Um, yeah, it's totally an envelope. Yeah. Sweet. Um, cool. So, the second computer. <laughs> um, I'm going to put that somewhere. Um, I'm assuming that all of this is on a table. Um, I'm not going to draw the table yet, but you know, it's like a it's like a desk. Um, uh, the hand is over it. <laughs> um, let me give this hand a black border now that our envelope is also um, white. So. Um, so you guys should help me think about what this letter is going to say. I think it should contain, so my thought is, um. Dearest Bartholomew. <laughs> I think it should have, um, it should have a word in it that is going to be the password to this computer, but no, like, identifier. Um, and I'm going to set the position of this letter as well. Let's define the characters. I think this letter is to Bartholomew. 
so we are we are at the desk of Bartholomew, mm-hmm. and um, maybe they just made an important connection this per- with this person while they were on a train going to Hungary. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, we could do it so that the first lo- letter of each line is the password because that's so secret. Oh. No password's ever done that before. <laughs> But then it's like you're sending this letter so that they'll know your password. Yeah. Well, are we reading this letter because we want to know more about the letter writer? Or because we know that they're sneaky? Well, I think the idea is the person whose desk this is found, the, like, made their password based off this letter that they had within arm's reach. Yeah. Or, like, you know, the password could be, like, maybe the password is their mother's maiden name. And the letter also <laughs> happens to mention their mother's maiden name. Oh. Or something. Um... Maybe he's like, Bartholomew, I'm going to be married. <laughs> but I don't want to change my last name. My mother's maiden name was so beautiful, and then it became <laughs> dumb. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just adding a clause to our if statement here. And I duplicated this um, if pointer overlaps with computer. And I click the drop down to change it from computer to letter. So now. If pointer overlaps with letter, then we're going to do some other stuff. Um, and that stuff is going to be more dialogues. So, oops. Can we make the cursor like a kiss that's lipstick? Oh, nice. Um, Wait, Vivian, hold it up. <laughs> I'm rooting for your chance, computer. <laughs> the. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so this one I am making transparent, um, and I'm going to just type some text. Um, Let's see. So this I want to be on the first line, I guess. Your wrist. Follow me with so long. Um, Uh, Hopefully it'll be right. I might have to truncate this to bark if it doesn't fit. Um, Maybe if they were friends, they wouldn't call each other like Bartholomew would be like Barty or like Mew Mew. <laughs> there is <Okay>. Bartho. <laughs> so I'm showing text that says, um, Dearest Bartholomew, I miss you. We'll fill this in later. And I changed the full screen to center, um, which is sort of smaller. So let's see how this looks. Um. <laughs> Um, ah, it is too long. It's going to be Bart for now. Let's see. I think we pretty much always need to set the frame color because otherwise it doesn't read well against the background. Yes. So actually, I have a plan for this. Okay. Um, nice. <laughs> um, so cool. Oh, it padded it uh, because it's a different size now. We should not do this. Oh, no, you just need to change the show long text to be full screen, right? Um, I don't want it to be full screen. Oh. I guess we could do pad text to just take a number to pad it. Yeah, really uh, I'm going to leave this but... for now just to, like, I'll, I'll show you guys what I have in mind for this, and maybe it'll become clearer. Um, so I'm changing the dialogue frame to add a little bit more padding around this text. Um, and then I'm going to... Um, create a sprite um, that is the size of the background. Um, all right. So we have this um, set background image. Great. Oh. I guess I could just set the background image. Uh, well, that wouldn't cover up the sprites. Yeah, I don't want to have to manually go in and hide the sprites. So I'm just going to actually change the size of this to be um, 160 by 120. Cool. Okay, and draw a pretty frame. Ooh. Yeah, so um, I'm going to draw, like, let's see. I think this will work okay size-wise. That might be a bit small. I think you might have a trouble if it's going off to a diagonal. Um, yeah, so I think it's not going to be very diagonal. Um, this is like, you know, mostly, mostly square. Um, and then here is the envelope part. Oh, that's good. 
And um, I guess it's just white on the other side. What do envelopes look like? Yeah, that. We can get one. Probably. Um, and then the back will be just sort of behind this, right? All right. And then I'm going to add it. got in one up. hole on the left side. Uh, oh yeah, I see it. Cool. All right. Um, and also one here. Let's see. So that works. That works. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to fill this in with tan to um, grab those edges. And then I'm going to fill it in again with white. Um, to erase it, and then I have a couple spaces in here that I'm going to fill with white. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm drawing like a custom dialog frame that is the shape of an envelope because we're opening an envelope to look at the letter inside. Um, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> Oh. You need to do it uh, before the show yes. long text and then destroy it after. Cool. So when you use show long text, it uh, pauses the game until the user presses A and gets through all the text. Then the game will start again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that for Shannon's benefit. I'm saying it for your <laughs> benefit, user. <laughs> Um, yeah, so exactly like Richard said, it paused the game before I made the background, so then the background didn't show up um, in the game. Cool. So, come on. Still not 100% sure this is going to work. We'll see. Yeah. Hey! Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Nice. Um, Bartho Dash. Yeah. That's also a bug with the line break right now. Oh, it has to be dearest, dearest Barty. <laughs> I think that will work. Um, I can also reduce the padding a little bit. Um, all right, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to fill this in with uh, black, the so it will cover up everything behind it as well. In general, um, you probably don't want to make very many big images like this for your game. Um, we, we're only doing one for this. <laughs> yeah, so one or two is fine. But if you do more than that, um, or, or you, you, you can have quite a few. But if you have a lot, it won't go into hardware. Because um, we basically have only so much space for the code on the hardware. And big images take up a lot of that space. Uh, cool. Another thing is if you modify them while you're running, so if you like replace the color, that'll be not great for your memory at runtime. That is true. So whenever you have a background image, you should never call anything like replace color or flip horizontal or any of those functions that change it. Um, basically, what it'll do in that case is it'll move it from the storage to the RAM. And we don't have a lot of RAM to mess with in this. Um, it's basically like making it so you have a second screen that it needs to run, mm -hmm. which is um, might cause your game to crash. Mm -hmm. Um, sweet. So let's fill in this letter. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, so full screen, the dialog takes up the whole width of the screen, which is 26 characters. Now that I'm doing center, it takes up less space. So if I right click on this function pad text and I click edit function, I'm going to add in a number that is like width. Um, so instead of using 26 here, I'm going to uh, drag in this width, and then here we'll, we know it's 26, so we're just going to pass in 20. Um, and here it is the length of dearest Barty, right? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, cool. All right, so I'm going to make this first line exactly 14, um, and then Everything else we can fill in like naturally, you know, it's a letter. Letters. Um, what is? What should this say? Um, it seems so long since our summer in Austria together. 
I find myself looking outside my bay window. That is too many words. Uh, <laughs> All right, I think this will about fill up the space we have available. Um, All right. And I press A, open the envelope. Cool. Um, and I'm no longer overlapping the envelope, so it stops. This works, I think. I'm going to add two spaces. I'm after. still just a little disappointed I can't talk about the germaniums being in bloom. And now. <laughs> um. If we were able to change the font size. Um, so, so, one, two, should push that over, and then Austria. Cool. Um, all right, so that's... The second way you can do dialogues, which is um, transparent background, custom image um, of what you want to display your text uh, over your text. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a post-it note to this computer, um, just like stuck to the side of it. Um, oh, well, that should have the password on it just regular, like by itself, just to be <laughs> realistic. <laughs> It, um, to like the letter. It'll be like, you know, where you met Jay or something like that. Um, oh, okay. That's probably... Yeah, I, I guess it, it's our duty as um, people who are teaching you about computer science to let you know you should choose strong passwords or use a password manager. <laughs> Don't make it be on a post-it on your computer or make it something that is on a letter with an arm's reach <laughs> that someone could figure out. Yes. The other we'll see, this is like... We're hacking into the computer because this person was not secure about their passwords. Yes. Also, hacking is not something you should do because you can get in trouble for it. <laughs> also, um, guessing passwords doesn't count as hacking, I think. <laughs> also, eat your vegetables and... Uh, mm, for what it's worth, just... Drink water. Typically, drink water. They're, they're pretty broad laws, so I think guessing passwords still counts as unauthorized access in a lot of states. <laughs> a good, good way to come careful. up with like a strong password is to think of a sentence. Wait, it should be maybe... yellow. What? Oh, I think yellow will look bad. Um, <laughs> yes, it can be yellow. Are yellow is just the, so yellow. Um, correct horse battery staple, uh, Vigan? I don't know what that is. What's that? That's the, uh, you pick a bunch of random words and string them together. Oh, okay. I was thinking something else. Like you have the long sentence and you take the first letter of each word and then sentence maybe like capitalize it in an interesting way in some like relevant numbers. Another good way to do that. I just, I just press a button on my password manager and it makes up a random string that's unintelligible and it works. <laughs> uh, you should probably change that to sticky instead of post-it. Treat mark of the 3M right. corporation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, that looks okay, I guess. It's acceptable. Um, so I put some scribbles on it to indicate that there's writing on it. Um, and we'll see. Um, I'm not sure how this overlaps code is going to fare. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a good one. I have a solution that helps fix this sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's usually just to make another sprite that actually handles the collisions and always position the hand off of that. So you'd have a sprite that's like three by three that's invisible. Uh, that way the cursor is off a, screen too. I think there's an easier fix, which is you just do the sticky check first and then the computer check second. Um, mm. Because the sticky, if you're on the sticky, you always want that one to be the one that's going. Right, yeah. Um, so the order that collisions happen in then is the order that you see the objects on the screen, right? The highest mm. one comes first. Um, is that? I guess that is true, isn't it? Is that true? Okay. <laughs> it's either that or it's the opposite, but they would be ordered by z-index. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. I don't know if we want people relying on that behavior, but I think that um, will be. <laughs> it should be the overlaps will occur. 
Oh, like overlap events won't occur consistently at all, actually. Are you sure? Because they might be in the sprite map, but they're added to the sprite map in the sorted order, which would be by the ID and the Z index, right? Yes, but it's going to be uh, dependent on the... I, the maybe it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so I'm actually just going to move this over some more so it's, you know, less overlappy. Um, it's a sticky note. And, um, come on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't it usually at the bottom of the, the screen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Smart, Carol. <laughs> um, okay, so let's do like there. I don't know. Ish. A lot of positioning guesswork in this. Okay, move it down by like 30. Probably good enough for now. Did we have a way to pick position on the simulator at one point? What happened to that? It was very confusing. No one knew how to use it, and it was pretty buggy. So we got rid of it, and we made a position picker where if you click on the numbers, you get a little small little piece of the screen. <laughs> right. It was also right. Bit, like surprising because it just blacks out all of the screen except for the... Uh, the, the user testing, I think, showed pretty consistently that no one knew what was happening or what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, and when the pointer overlaps with the sticky, we're going to have one more um, dialog. And this one is going to look like a post-it note. So I'm going to set the color to dark purple, I guess. Um, I'm going to set the frame to be, what is this, 15 by 15? So it's going to be yellow and have a stripe along the top. Whoops. Uh, this is the one where we need the this to occur to be before the other ones in the if, right? So that it occurs first. Um, yeah, they're not overlapping right now. Um, because I'm, Oh, okay. I they're just moved it. So it wasn't, but, um, I, yeah, I guess I should just rearrange it now. Um, all right. So Instead of doing computer first, we're going to do the sticky first and um, move the computer down. Um, so I'll go over everything in this if statement also. Um, so what we have here is when you press the A button, if the pointer overlaps with the sticky note, then we're going to do our sticky dialog stuff. If the pointer overlaps with the letter, as before, transparent dialog, we set the background image. And if the pointer overlaps with the computer, we're using a full screen dialog with, you know, a black background and green text. Um, and I'm also, I'm not using the dialog cursor in the sticky note or the um, uh, letter. But we'll see. Maybe it'll, um, maybe we can do something with the sticky note. And then I'm going to drag out some text, uh, the show long text. And I think this one will also be show long text center. Um, and I don't know. Um, cool. So if I overlap the sticky note, I made it orange, I forgot. It's tough to run Teams in the browser <laughs> at the same time. Hmm. I guess I'll make the border bigger. Um, I think if I have just like a big um, the line up here, that will be sticky note esque. Um, if you guys have other ideas on how to make this look more like a sticky note, I'm also very open. 
No, that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. All right. So, this is eight. That should be fine. And it'll be orange because that's how it is in the sprite. So let's check out the sticky note. All right. Yeah. That looks great. Passably a sticky note. <laughs> um, and then the last thing to do is we're going to give you a way to enter the password. So I'm going to draw a keyboard um, or, or something. I'm going to draw you know, a rectangle, and we'll see. Um, the question is, which switches are this, is this keyboard using? <laughs> Browns. So the keyboard has to be wider than the computer, um, which is maybe just a little bit. And then we'll make it less tall. Maybe even less than that. So, um, using the transparent fill to erase things in big chunks, and then I'm just going to select this and move it off. Boom. Um, the other thing you can do to very quickly erase is to make your image very small and then very big again. Um, or, in the next beta, we'll probably, the next beta bump will have selecting and then just press backspace. Yes. Most yes. Backspace. It was a community cool. contribution. That will. <laughs> I guess we can merge now. All right. So here is our keyboard. Um, it's, you know, I'm just going to do. Oh, geez. I just need the user to sort of be able to recognize that it's a keyboard. I feel like, oh, I should have filled it first. Let's do this. Cool. I feel like when it's like next to the screen, what else would you have? <laughs> Maybe a computer, right? You're not going to yeah. have like, shingles for your roof. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying about my keyboard drawing skills, Vivian? <laughs> They're great. <laughs> There's something. <laughs> Oof, I don't know if we can use this one. It's not ergonomic, not rounded. <laughs> yeah, I prefer when mine has a split space bar. And, oh um... <laughs> but then it looks less like a space bar, more like a big letter. <laughs> um, I noticed you're going for the 66 key format, and I really think that you want a numpad on this baby. Mm -hmm. um, are there like, a separate one? I have one separate. Machine? Is that what you think is? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna put in. I don't know anything about keyboards, by the way. Keyboards. It is, um, but there, there, uh, there is some it's pretty some close to sixty percent. No, I mean, sorry, there's not sixty-six keys on my keyboard. Is what I'm saying on on the <laughs> format that I was going for. <laughs> oh. All right, cool, close enough. Um, it's great. I'm going to put this below the computer. Um, so I'll set it to the same. Um, let's see. So this X is 3446. Uh, I'm going to just move it like slightly down here. Probably more than that. Here. All right. And I think I actually want to do the keyboard. Um, immediately after I do the computer. So it'll be behind these other things. Um, and I think we're also going to need to move these other things so that they're not overlapping. <laughs> All right. Cool. That basically works. Um, 
Um, so we're checking for the sticky note first. That should be fine. And then I'm going to move the letters X just over, like, you know. Um, and maybe also just the keyboard down a little bit. Mm, I can be. All right. So now that we have um, painstakingly positioned everything on this desk, um, we're going to do the keyboard interaction after we see that this works. Come on. Cool. So finally, um, if your cursor is overlapping the keyboard, um, we're going to ask you to enter the password. Um, so pointer overlaps with keyboard. Then um, I'm going to drag out an if. And inside the game, we have this block called ask for string. Um, and what this does is it will ask the user to input a string. And I need to check to see if it equals something. Um, cool. And it will return that string. Um, so let me actually um, very quickly show you what this is doing. Uh, I'm going to drag out a sprite.say. And I'll have the keyboard say the string. Um, so this is um, a thing you might have seen people use it to like um, ask the player what their username is. Um, you can use it to ask the player what their favorite food is. Uh, anything Those like that. Those three questions. <laughs> cool. So if I hover over the keyboard, I press A, and it reloads. Great. One more time. Did we still have a bug with the A? Well, we'll see in a minute. Cool. All right. So now we have this um, screen where you can enter stuff. Um, so I'm just going to say hi. And if I hit OK, um, cool. Now the keyboard is saying hi. You can see over here. Um, so this is a way to get like you know user input into your game, basically. So I'm going to say um, if ask for string. I'm going to delete this say. And the string I'm going to ask for is um, enter password. And um, if the password that they enter is equal to um, Austria, all lowercase. And then, um, what should I do? I think maybe we're just going to do another dialogue that is like unlocked. Um, so I guess this computer stuff could be moved into a function. Um, I'll do that real quick. So computer text, and it takes in a string that is text. Um, so here, I'm just going to grab all of this dialog stuff, put it in a function, um, and then I'm going to, in our computer function, call show computer text with this big join that we have. So show computer text, computer locked, enter password, and then here. I'm going to show long text um, when I'm going to show whatever is passed into this function. Um, so this way, I can just do the exact same thing here, um, which is um, say pad text. Um, it's going to say um, I don't know what the computer should say. Maybe it should be like hello, Bartholomew. Yeah, good. We have a chance to put the full name in there. <laughs> um, I've been expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> it has been three years since you logged in. Oh no, what happened to Bartholomew? All right, guys, this is taken. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's 
see. Let's see how this works. I think some of these line breaks might be suspect. Um, but Maybe cool. they just got a new computer. <laughs> oh, they I should make 90 this. 90 emails. <laughs> um, I should do the remainder. Okay, let's do this first, and we'll see how um, it goes. So here's... Start the simulator. Cool. Um, so if I click on the letter, um, I get our letter. Um, cool. And I should be able to press A again to dismiss it. And then Open this. I click on the computer. Um, I should get a computer lock screen and the sticky note will show the password hint. And then if I press our keyboard. U S T R A. Okay. And sweet. Cool. <laughs> um, so that basically does what we want it to. Um, I think I can change, um, I think we have enough time for this, I guess. Um, I can change this to, it should fill out, um, to whatever multiple of 26, right? Like here we actually want it to fill out this entire line, um, with spaces. So you can do length of padded text mod width yes. equals zero. Yes, exactly. Um, so instead of doing length of padded text directly less than the width, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the remainder of the length of 20. Uh, this is a quick random block. Um, the remainder of the padded text divided by the width. Um, and what I want is I want the remainder to be zero because I want this to be perfectly divisible by you know whatever the um, length is, which is 26 in some cases. So, well, the remainder of the padded text divided by width does not equal zero. I'm going to add spaces. Um, and I think that should do it. I think you need to add three spaces after the N in the uh, letter, and that'll make it so Austria doesn't get broken up. Oh, cool. Uh, should we have Austria as lowercase a, too, so that it doesn't oh. that people? <laughs> Whoever J is, they don't capitalize their... Um, they have a casual relationship. They're buddies. They know what they won't be judged for their grammar. It's just one of the many Austrias, you know? <laughs> cool. So if I go to the keyboard, um, press A, wait for the X to show up. R I A. All right. Enter password. Cool. Um, we're off by one, but close enough. <laughs> um, all right. Do we have a name for this game? Germaniums in Austria. What did you say in Just Austria? Kidding. Germaniums. Oh. <laughs> Um, Bartholomew finds his way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All 
right. Um, cool. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm Shannon. I'm on the Make Code Forums. And I'm Daryl at Darzu on the Make Code Forums. I'm Joe at Jwonderl on the Make Code Forums. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forums. And I'm Vivian at Live Cheerful on the Make Code Forums.